The Children in the Village by the Prowler There's a village in the hills of Maine, quiet and sleepy, it would seem. But behind the charming and rustic facade of this tucked-away village lies a curse. At least that's what some people are calling it. As I've heard it told, as the day gets later and the nights get colder, you better make sure your home is secure. Windows locked and doors bolted, and make sure a fire is burning in the fireplace all through the night, because you may hear a rapping on your door, a tapping on your window, or hear the sounds of footsteps on your roof. Whatever you do, my friends, don't be frightened, but also do not open the door. Do not go to the window. Do not see what is on your roof and pay no attention of their pleas and cries, for it is the children, and they want to come in. Not any children, mind you, but the black-eyed children that haunt this village and cause a path of hurt and decay to whomever is foolish enough to open their door. They'll beg to come in. Do not let them. They'll plead that they're cold and they're hungry. Do not listen. They'll say that they're lost and cry uncontrollably, but show no heart. Close the door if you know what is good for you, or a curse will beset you and whoever resides in your home. It took a while for it to set in with the people of the village. Ten people lost their lives before the rest of the village caught on. They're still skeptics, though, as to all the deaths appeared to be accidental by nature. But the rest know. They know those deaths were no accident. Every instance, it was reported that every victim had given shelter to one of those damned children just days before their deaths. They're out there, waiting, ready for their next victim, out in the night with the blackest of eyes, like doll's eyes. Shh! What is that I hear? <coughs> A knocking at the door. There comes one of them now, waiting at your doorstep. The Whispering Woods by Awkward Pie, 1331 In the heart of the dense whispering woods, where the trees seemed to breathe and the shadows danced menacingly, there lay a long-forgotten cabin, it was said that anyone who dared to enter would be forever cursed. A group of adventurous teenagers, seeking a thrill on Halloween night, decided to test the legend. As they stepped into the eerie forest, an unsettling stillness enveloped them. The air was thick with an ominous energy, and the trees whispered dreadful secrets to one another. As they neared the cabin, the atmosphere grew suffocating. The moon's pale light filtered through the branches, casting eerie silhouettes on the ground. The cabin loomed before them like a haunted specter, its ancient walls sagging with despair. Ignoring the gut feeling to turn back, they pushed open the creaking door. Inside, the air was stagnant and icy, the smell of decay overwhelming. Each step they took echoed through the empty rooms, sending shivers down their spines. In the darkness, they heard faint whispers calling their names. Fear clutched their hearts, but curiosity held them in place. They scattered in different directions, exploring the ominous rooms. As they ventured deeper, 
The whispers grew louder, more insistent, almost threatening. In a hidden corner, one of them discovered an old journal. Its yellowed pages told tales of a dark ritual performed in the cabin, summoning malevolent spirits from the netherworld. The cursed soul sought vengeance against the living, using the forest to lure unsuspecting victims. Suddenly, the whispers intensified. <laughs> and the cabin seemed to come alive. Door slammed shut, trapping the teenagers inside. <laughs> As chilling laughter reverberated through the walls, panic consumed them, and they desperately tried to escape. But every door they opened led to another sinister hallway. The spirits manifested before them, their ghastly forms hovering in the air. The four shadows coiled around their ankles, preventing any escape. The air grew colder and their breath turned visible in the frigid darkness. One by one, the spirits tormented the terrified teenagers, recounting their darkest secrets and fears. They played on their minds, twisting their thoughts into horrifying nightmares. The once fearless group now trembled in despair, knowing they had unleashed unspeakable evil. As the night wore on, the whispers became screams, and the cabin walls seemed to close in on them. The spirit's wrath reached its peak, and the forest responded to their malevolence, sending a storm of thunder and lightning to torment them further. Just as hope seemed lost, the clock struck midnight. In a blinding flash, the spirits vanished, leaving the cabin silent and desolate once again. The doors swung open, and the teens stumbled outside, disheveled and shaken. They never spoke of what they witnessed in the whispering woods. The cabin stood as a grim reminder of their brush with darkness. From that night on, they were forever haunted by the chilling whispers in their dreams, a constant reminder of the cursed woods they dared to enter. This New Old House by Bat Out of Hell, 821 We bought an old house, my boyfriend and I. He's in charge of the new construction, converting the kitchen into the master bedroom, for instance, while I'm on wallpaper removal duty. The previous owner papered every wall and ceiling. Removing it is brutal, but oddly satisfying. The best feeling is getting a long peel, similar to your skin when you're peeling from a sunburn. I don't know about you, but I kind of make a game of peeling on the hunt for the longest piece before it rips. Under a corner section of paper in every room is a person's name and a date. Curiosity got the best of me one night, when I googled one of the names and discovered the person was actually a missing person, the missing date matching the date under the wallpaper. The next day, I made a list of all the names and dates. Sure enough, each name was for a missing person with dates to match. We notified the police 
who naturally sent out the crime scene team. I overheard one tech say, Yep, it's human. Human? What's human? Ma'am, where is the material you removed from the walls already? This isn't wallpaper. You were removing. Pick Your Poison by Deontistic A few weeks ago, I started experience extreme vertigo, along with a variety of other symptoms, symptoms like impaired speech and short-term memory loss. At my request, my wife had taken me to the hospital. A week or so later, and after a fairly straightforward medication-based regimen, the symptoms had abated, and back home I went. About a week later, my wife noticed that I'd started presenting the same symptoms to a lesser degree. I consulted with my physician, and we agreed that I'd be fine staying at home. He agreed to send a nurse twice a day to take care of my medication needs, and my wife could take care of me otherwise. She was a nurturer by nature, after all, and was more than happy to look after me. So every day the nurse would come in the morning to start me on my medication, and then my wife would go to work. I'd be alone until noon, when my wife would come home to bring me lunch, usually some type of soup, something that would be easy on my digestive tract. Of course, I never ate the lunch she made. I'd wait until she'd gone back to work, and then I'd go to the kitchen and make myself a pastrami sandwich or some such. Several weeks into the routine, my wife had become concerned. Not only had she not detected any improvement or deterioration in my condition, she had begun to feel rather poorly herself. I felt a little guilty for having kept secrets from her. But, well, I'm pretty sure... She'd been keeping secrets from me. You see, my doctor had told me I'd been suffering from mercury poisoning before. And being a buddy of mine, this was a fact he'd agreed not to share with my wife. Coincidentally, my wife works at a lab where she has access to mercury. Hmm. Being the bad husband I was... There were probably a few other little details I'd been keeping from her. For instance, every morning she'd make herself a cup of coffee and set it on the nightstand before taking her shower. Turns out we'd had a half-empty jug of antifreeze in the garage, and I might have brought a flask of it into our bedroom, and it's possible that I might have been putting a few drops of it in her coffee every morning. I also haven't told her that I've been faking my symptoms this second go-around. Nor have I told her that I took out a life insurance policy on her to match the one she took out on me. I'm thinking tomorrow I might up her daily dose. I hear there are extreme temperatures where she's headed. After all, I would like to give a heartfelt thank you to the special friends of the channel for your overwhelming generosity. If you would like to support the channel, the link is below in the description. Also, please send me your stories and poems to duchessofdarkness27 at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram at duchess.ofdarkness and Twitter at duchessofdarkn2. I want to thank all my listeners for your kindness, your encouragement, and your support. It means the world to me. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.